Good morning, Christ is Risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 13 through 22. In those days, when the Jews saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they wondered, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. But seeing the man that had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in opposition. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that a notable sign has been performed through them is manifest to all inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But in order that it may spread no further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. And so they called them and charged them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. And when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all men praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom the sign of healing was performed was more than 40 years old. The second reading this morning is from the Gospel of St. John, verses five, chapter 5, verses 17 through 24. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, My father is working still, and I am working. This was why the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also called God his own father, making himself equal with God. And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever he does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son, and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these he will show him, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. He who does not come, he does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. When we hear this gospel this morning, we see a very clear indication of the amazing bond of love that exists between the Father and the Son. This is what makes our church so strongly Trinitarian, because you cannot think of the Father without thinking of the Son. And likewise, you also cannot think of the Holy Spirit in our own context without thinking of the Father. I believe it's St. Gregory the Theologian, that great luminary of our past, who said, When you say Father, you also mean Son and Holy Spirit. And likewise, when you say Son, you mean Father and Holy Spirit. And when you say Holy Spirit, you likewise mean Father and Son. That is the incredible bond that exists between the three. Our church teaches that essentially they are one, one in essence but that they each have differences, and those differences we can translate to some degree in terms of persona or personality, but that really doesn't give into the fullness of what's going on. This gospel, though, does give a very clear indication that the Son operates independently, yet has no desire to do anything otherwise than what the Father is doing or wants. Their love is so strong for one another that we would say that the will of one is equal to the will of the other. And I realize this can be somewhat complicated to understand. The doctrine of the Trinity is not easy, and there have been people who have been trying to interpret it for centuries. And usually when they get close to thinking that they understand it, they jump right into a heresy. They make too much of the individuality of each, or they make too much of the oneness of all, and it ends up in a great mess. I think it's better just to stick with what we have in the Gospel this morning and what we see elsewhere in the Gospel of St. John, where Christ speaks of the Holy Spirit being sent on behalf of him through the Father and so forth. 
And so when we understand that, then we can understand our own practicalities and the things that we can do. Think of it this way. When the father loves the son, and the son loves the father so much that the son just seeks to do the will of the father, that is a prototype for what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to love Christ. We are supposed to love God with our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. And so the things that we do should be in accord with the will of the Son and of the Father. So when we say, what is it that we should do? One of the first things that we can do is consult the scriptures and see the things that Jesus has told us to do, the things that he expects us to do. And when we do those things, then we are saying, yes, Jesus, or yes, God, or yes, our Lord Christ. Yes, I love you. And yes, I love you so much that I want my will to be like your will. It's not easy, especially in this day and age, but it is something that we are all capable of doing. And why? Because the Holy Spirit lives within us. So in many ways, all we really have to do is get our will to be in residence, to harmonize even with the Holy Spirit that is within us. And when we do that, then because God is one, and because the Holy Spirit loves the Father and the Son so much that it does the will of the Father and the Son without question, then we ourselves find ourselves in a position where we can do likewise. It is not easy, as I said, I mean, we need to suspend a lot of our own desires, our own will. And those things can be done, but they are only done through prayer and fasting and practice of asceticism. And those things come with work. And we are in a time right now when that work can be done. And so, try it. For a day, just do what it says in the scriptures. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, give a coat if they ask for your you know if they ask for your coat give them your shirt as well lend without interest those kinds of things they're all through the scriptures if you want you can look at matthew 5 through 7 for the sermon on the mount or you can look at the gospel of saint luke in chapter 6 and you'll see the equivalent of the sermon on the mount we would call that the sermon on the plain both are spiritually nourishing and if you are able to live into the expectations that are found there you will find life in abundance, not only here in this world, but in the world to come. May God bless you and keep you. May he give you good peace and a sense of his presence in all the things that you do. Christ is risen. God bless you. and God willing, we will meet again tomorrow. Have a good day.